welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a little like chit chat and get ready with me type of video. I'm just gonna do my everyday makeup and today's topic is gonna be about college and career. I get a lot of questions about this all the time on my Instagram and my TikTok. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, my experience going to college and what I do for a job and how I got there and all that stuff. Okay, first things first, I got this cat headband from Ulta. I love it. All right, so let's talk about college. I am almost 25, I'm gonna be 25 in a month. Um, I graduated from UC Santa Barbara in 2019, so it'll be three years from this spring. I honestly loved college. Like I had a really good experience. I made some really amazing friends. I think when I was applying to colleges in high school, I think I maybe applied to like maybe around 10 colleges. And the two schools that I was choosing between were um, UC Santa Barbara and Cal Poly Slow. And I visited both schools and I just really felt like, I just really vibe with UC Santa Barbara. It's, if you've never heard of it, it's literally right on the beach, right on the beach. The campus is literally on the beach. It's so beautiful. Santa Barbara is such a beautiful city. The weather is just perfect all the time. Never went above 90 and below 60. It was literally perfect. Um, just really a great, great school and a great campus. I, I really love living there. And fun fact about me is that when I applied to colleges, I was applying as a, I was applying as a computer science major. I don't know why. Um, well, I feel like growing up, I thought me and my mom both thought that I was going to be like a computer science person. Like I really liked coding and like, uh, I don't know, it's like computer stuff. So I really thought that's what I was gonna do. So that's what I applied to college um, for, computer science. And I went in and was immediately like, oh, this is not for me. So I, my first year I changed to a communications major. I took a comm class and I was like, this is not for me either. And then I finally settled on my actual major. I ended up graduating with a degree in Asian studies and feminist studies. So yeah, I went from a, being a computer science uh, person to uh, humanities. So there was not really a stigma for me, but I feel like a lot, I've talked to a lot of people who have like a stigma or their, their parents just don't approve of them majoring in humanities or like women's studies and race studies. Fortunately for me, um, I have, I've had a few cousins and aunts who also majored in women's studies and they're very successful. So my mom like didn't really care um, that I majored in women's studies because people in my family had done that before. Also, you do not have to get a job with your major. Like a lot of, for a lot of people, your degree doesn't really mean that's what you're gonna get a job in. Uh, for example, my aunts and my cousins who majored in women's studies, one of them does math for a living, one of them is a director at like a, a university, and then one of them does marketing for a living. So like you really don't need a job with your degree if that makes sense like just because you get a communications degree doesn't mean you're gonna do communications for the rest of your life and you know what I mean so the way I saw it is that I'm gonna be in college for four years and high school beat my ass high school was fine I the, but the workload that we had like why were we doing that much work um and that just that beat my ass like all the work the AP classes and I was like, well, you know, if I'm gonna be somewhere for four years and studying something, it better be something I like because, or else I'll literally hate my life. And I had to take a feminist studies class and an Asian studies class for like a general requirement and I loved it. And I was like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna study this. I am really lucky because, well, I don't know if this is luck because I grew up really poor. Like my family did not have money. My mom was a single mom raising two kids. She made like $14 an hour. We didn't have our own house. Like we lived with, we lived um, in like my grandma's spare bedroom. And so I got a lot of financial aid um, through the schools, through like grants. Um, so almost like my whole college experience was paid for. Like I really didn't have to pay a lot. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But also I, I got that because I was poor. So like, it's not like I was a star student. I was just like, my family was just broke. Like I did feel like a pressure to like, be successful and like make money but I was kind of being also being selfish and and being like 
I want to I want to enjoy my life. I want to love my life. So I'm gonna study what I what I want. But yeah, majoring in feminist studies and Asian studies was really amazing. Um, I really, really liked the classes, really liked the teachers and the other students that I worked with. Um, and then I had this really amazing opportunity my third year of college, one of my professors asked me to be a teaching like assistant for an uh, undergraduate class. But it was a one unit class that met like once a week for Filipino American undergraduates. And basically what I did was I, me and another teaching assistant, there are two of us, we made the entire syllabus and led all class discussions. And my professor just kind of sat in the corner and watched. And it was it was actually a really cool experience um, just being able to, to be in a class with a bunch of other Filipino Americans in college um, and just facilitating discussions. We talked about like cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation and I don't know, it's like the, the experience of being like a Filipino American in college and it was, it was really cool. The number one question I get when people hear about my major is, well, what do you have a job in or what can you do with that degree? You can do anything with that degree. You can do anything with any degree. Like, like I said, you don't have to get a job that correlates with your degree. Like I work in marketing now and I don't have a communications degree. I have a... Asian studies and gender studies degree, which I actually think is very helpful. I think having having learned, um, having studied that for four years has really just made me a better person. And uh, I, just, I learned a lot through my majors. It was a lot of racial theory, gender theory, history, like history of gender and race and sexuality, law, and I don't know, it, was, it went like all over the place. I've, I took like a, a lot of really cool classes that I feel like just really helped me like un unlearn a lot of things that were just ingrained into my head uh, gr growing up in a Western society. And I don't know, I just, I had really special experience um, in my time at college, I really did. I've been doing eyeliner for like 10 years, so I can do it pretty fast, but it was not always this way. It used to take me in high school like an hour to do my makeup every morning and it looks so bad but you know all that trial and error has led me to where i am today and it's to this winged eyeliner so pretty much just like that it looks fine so while i was also going to college like i also did work i had part-time jobs and i also had one like a full-time job like i i worked a lot um and i worked at the college radio station at my college i was really into music um loved shoegaze that was like my thing in like high school and early college and I got a job at the college radio station. I did social media for them and then I went into a management position and that was really fun, um, a really cool experience. Uh, and I feel like that just looked really good on my resume, being able to manage a, like a media organization like that. I think that looks fine. For my inner eyeliner, I do like a little cat eye thing, but I have this thing called like an epi epicanthal fold or something. So my like, uh, I skin like doesn't connect so it's hard for me to make like a cat eye thing that connects but I honestly don't care it, it looks kind of ugly up close when I do it but I, I, I don't care so whatever so I also had job experience while I was in college um, I didn't just like come out of college with no experience at all okay sorry I just had to do that off camera really quick I graduated I actually graduated a quarter early because I was just taking a full load of classes um, the whole time I was in college no one told me how hard it was going to be to get a job after college. No one told me. I've had friends who got really lucky and got offers like right when they graduated. And I have friends like me who could not get a job for like years. I was applying to so many jobs right out of college and I could not get any. And right after I graduated college, I moved from California to Philadelphia with my best friend. Um, and I just could not get a job. And also, moving to a new city, I kind of wanted a more social job anyways, so I could meet more people. So I actually got a job at a, as a barista at a, as a coffee shop here. So yes, I graduated college and made seven twenty five an hour as a barista. Um, plus tips, but like I didn't make, not make that much money in tips. So that was awesome for a first job with a degree to work at make $7.25. But it was actually, I do not regret it because I actually really liked that job and I met so many of my really close friends now through that job. But anyways, 
my point is I was really trying to get a job, like a, a salary job. And I just kept reje getting rejection upon rejection upon rejection. And at one point I just gave up and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna be this barista. And then actually I, I was a barista for about, oh, oh my gosh, like a year, almost almost a year, maybe like 10 months. And the whole time I had been applying to, to other jobs, I'm, I'm using the wet and wild contour palette by the way. The whole time I've been applying to jobs like LinkedIn and Indeed and stuff and not really getting anything. And then I will never forget, oh my gosh, let me tell you this, this insane story. There is this organization, they're like an Asian American art gallery and they had a job posting for like a front desk assistant. And I was like, oh, this is literally my dream job. Like my degree is in Asian American studies. I have a ton of experience in music and art. Um, so this is just perfect for me and the exhibit they actually had going on was an exhibit about asian american musicians and a lot of the people who were in the exhibit i knew or i had worked with in the past because again like i worked in college radio i worked in music i booked shows i did all that and i was like this is a sign like this is perfect um i applied for this job i don't hear back for like two months i follow up and i'm like hey it's like been two months since i applied to this and I haven't heard back, so I assume I didn't get it, but if you have any other opportunities at this organization, like I would love that. Someone gets back to me and they're like, oh, well actually we have an, uh, an internship available um, that we're taking applications for, so you can apply. And I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I'm not really get going anywhere in my professional life right now, so I'll apply for this internship. It was stipended. So I applied for this internship. I go like above and beyond. I really want this to work at this organization. I show up to one of the art gallery openings and I introduced myself to like everyone who worked there. It's like, hey, like I'm Megan, like I applied to this job. I just want to introduce myself. Um, I got an interview for the internship. I did one interview and then the woman who had interviewing me like emailed me and she was like, you know, like we want, actually let's interview you for the front desk position. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like they probably were like, this girl has a degree in, in Asian studies and all this experience in like music and art. Like let's give her a, let's give her a job interview instead of an internship interview. I do the intern I do the job interview. I don't get the job. I don't get the job. But they do offer me the internship. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, okay, whatever, I'll take the internship because I have nothing else on my table. I have no other job prospects. So I accept the internship. I'm pretty bummed about it though. Uh, and I'm still working part-time at the um, the cafe. I accept this internship. And they train me. For, for the internship, they trained me with the person that they hired for the, the front desk job that I applied for. They trained me with this person. I need this person. Let me tell you, there's like 16 people who work at this organization. They're all Asian, except for like one guy. This man who works the front desk at the art exhibit is a white man. And you know, I really did not try not to have prejudice. So like, we're talking because he and I were being trained together. So we have like a lot of downtime together. He's not personable at all. He's actually really shy and like was not even trying to talk to me. And he like, we went to go eat dim sum and he like didn't know what dim sum was. He was like, what is that? And I was like, so you're not even like a weeb? Like you're or, like, you know, you're not even like an Asian, Asia boo. Like you're just, you're just a white guy. He just didn't know anything about the area. He didn't know anything about like the Chinatown or the history of the city. And I, I did. And he just knew nothing about like Asian American artists and authors who, which was my specialty. Um, and he was just like not friendly at all. Like I, by the end of like the first day of our internship, I knew like everyone who worked there's names and was saying hi to them in the hallway. And he like was just looking the other way and did not try to talk to anybody. And I was like, okay, well maybe, you know, he has other qualities. And then in one of our trainings, we're getting trained for um, like Google, we we're just like getting trained for something and he asked me he asked me how do you get to google drive he asked me how do you get to google drive so anyways i literally went home and cried i was literally crying to my roommate like how do they not hire me who has a degree in this who has relevant experience who's an asian american woman but they hired this guy who literally just seems like they pulled him out of a bucket hat like no experience like nothing and i was just so upset because i don't know if any well a lot of you probably know like how it feels to be like undervalued especially as like an asian woman who has you know all the qualifications and more 
And I was just really disappointed for this to come from like an Asian organization. And yeah, I was just really pissed off. And I had actually set, scheduled a meeting to talk with the hire, the person who hired me, so I could ask her like why. But then that was the week that everything shut down due to COVID. And I ended up um, not going back for the internship because of COVID. So I never got to know like why I wasn't hired for this role and why this man was. Um, but yeah, that really sucked. And I just felt like that was very, that experience alone was just so indicative of my job search, post-college job search as a whole, because it just, it was just like that. It was just me being qualified for stuff and not getting it and like trying so hard. And yeah, it really sucked. Anyways, COVID happened. I lost my barista job. I lost that internship. I ended up moving back to California and I was applying to jobs. I got a full-time job doing like remote administrative work for this company and it was literally the most terrible job ever. It was so boring. I hated it, but I couldn't be picky because COVID times, you know, and I, so I did that for like maybe four months. And then I ended up actually interviewing for this job on LinkedIn for this like clothing brand that I found on LinkedIn. And um, I ended up actually getting that job. And that was like in October 20 or September, 2020. So the job was being a social media manager for this clothing brand. And I had some social media work or experience um, I did social media for the radio station back in college, and I also, um, I don't, I think I totally forgot to mention this, but I've also done pr event promotion and booking shows for artists, smaller independent artists, um, so I had experience doing that, but I think it was my personality that, like, you know, won them over, I think. <laughs> um, they really liked my, me, my personality, and so they hired me uh, to be a social me media manager for this clothing brand, um, and I did that, like, kind of in a hybrid remote um, and hybrid position. Um, and I did that for about a year. And then I got this other job at a startup, um, doing like social media and community management for them, like running their like, uh, ambassador program. But the thing about startups is that, you know, they, they can be kind of finicky. They brought me on as an hourly employee and then they were like, you know, like in six weeks, we're gonna be able to make you a full-time employee. Um, we're gonna give you this salary that you that we agreed upon and all this. Um, and that just, that day just never came because they never got the funding. And after two months of working there as like a, sal or as an hourly employee, I was like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not working for you anymore. But I actually just got a job offer for a new job that I am starting in a couple weeks. Um, and it's doing social media management. And I'm really excited because I've actually been interviewing for this job for like two months. It's been a long process. So so I'm pretty excited about it. And that's just kind of been uh, my college and professional career journey if i had any tips um i truly don't know because i'm truly still trying to figure things out like i i really don't <sighs> i've kind of been everywhere like my little sister she's an accountant um and she got a job literally right out of college making money and i feel like it has taken me just the long road to get to where i am today um, but I'm grateful for it. Like I, I love my life. I love my life experiences. I love everyone I've met along the way. But man, do I wish I had financial security earlier in life. I feel like maybe definitely do internships if you can. I didn't really do an internship because I had like a full, like I was working a lot in college and there were not actually a lot of internships in Santa Barbara. I feel like all the internships that I wanted were in LA. But also know that like, it's totally okay if you don't have your stuff, your shit together because I did not. And honestly, most of my friends did not have their shit together. Uh, most of my friends like did not get jobs straight out of college. Like it was actually, I feel like the, the majority of people that I went to college with like had a similar experience to me where they had a difficult time getting a job. 
again there are the people that were able to get jobs right away you know six figures or whatever and good for them but like if that's not you like don't sweat it again i'm gonna be 25 in like a month and i feel like i am only now at the point in my life where i i actually don't even have financial security right now like i'm i'm on the cusp of it because i haven't started my job yet so um I'm, I'm on my way there this year at age 25 i think will be the first year where i am like secure financially and have like some sort of success professionally so it has taken me a little bit longer than i thought it would but it doesn't matter because you know everyone's timeline is different and i'm here now so yay okay i think we're almost done i'm just gonna do um my lipstick and for my lips i if you're my friend and you know me you know that i only i only use two lipsticks and it's the kvd beauty liquid lipsticks and lolita 2 and outlaw i probably bought rebought each of these like six seven eight nine ten times um these are the only two lipsticks i wear and i have tried other lipsticks and every once in a while i'll buy a new lipstick and i'll try it out but nothing really sticks like these to do like these just they're very comfortable on my lips and they just i just really like the colors on me and so lolita 2 is like my everyday also something i forgot to address and i feel like people will ask like oh like if you knew you wanted to do get into marketing why didn't you just stay as a comm communications major i did not know i wanted to get into marketing i actually don't even know if i this is not my desired career choice social media marketing for brands is not really my desired career choice it's just kind of what i've been able to get jobs in if that makes sense my dream job is to be a business owner like my dream job is literally and it's this has been my dream for years is so one day I want to open up my own cafe because I love being a barista. Being a barista was like one of my favorite jobs, but you don't get paid. And so my dream job is to just be a barista but own my own cafe so that I can maybe make a little bit more than $7 an hour. But yeah, anyways, that's my dream job. I want to be a business owner. I want to work for myself. I want to have, I want to own a cafe. Social media and marketing is not really what I wanted to do. It's just kind of where I ended up because you know, first off, it's hard to get a job as is. So when I was applying to LinkedIn, hundreds of jobs, just applying, applying, applying. Social media jobs are just the ones that got back to me. Also, because I had that one experience in college um, and that's just what I've been able to get a job in. So and I'm just rolling with it. So, and I'm good at it, I guess. But if I had chosen my career, like, would this be where I am? I don't know, but also I don't know how to switch careers. Does that does that make sense? Like this is just what I was able to get on LinkedIn and I've just been rolling with it um, because now I have quite a bit of experience in it. Um, but yeah, my dream job is to own a cafe. So one day my plan is to save up enough money so that I can do that because cafes and opening up a business is really, really expensive and I don't want to be in debt. I think that I'm done with my makeup. This is my first time doing this sort of video, so I hope it was entertaining and I hope um, you liked it. If you have a, a topic you want me to talk about in the next like get ready with me video, please let me know. And if you have any questions about um, like my college experience or my career, um, please feel free to comment and I will try to get my best to get back to you. But yes, here's my look. I am about to go get coffee with a friend and I am very excited. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you are a recent college grad or you're about to be a college grad and you don't know what you're doing and you're not getting any jobs, it's okay. And everyone is on a different timeline and you will get there eventually. And sometimes it's a journey, but it's gonna be fun nevertheless. And you're gonna meet awesome people and have really great experiences. And you might be really broke and uh, selling your personal belongings to make rent, but you know, one day you will have a uh, security. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to follow me, like, comment, subscribe, um, and comment below if you, if this video resonated with you or you have any questions or comments, um, let me know. Bye.